meanwhile. I think. Is it? I think so. I gotta check with them. Uh, yeah, oh, this, okay. 500. Right. Let's okay, do this. Okay, so, so I want to get 500 on Spro. Yes. Okay, go. Be my own nasty. <laughs> wow. Be my own nasty. Oh, that's five more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but you, you're not going to win the audience choice on this. <laughs> I don't choose. <laughs> go. We only live once. Enjoy. We Woo. only live once. Enjoy. Okay. Okay. You can hashtag okay. that. <laughs> Um, I make it meaningful, make it deep. Very deep. Um, I travel to find love. Oh! <laughs> Wait, have you found it? No. Yeah. <laughs> because travel makes me alive. It's good, it's good. It's Very good. inspirational. Uh, to experience culture of others. Ah, oh, that's good too. Wow. That's good too. Okay, okay. So, <laughs> okay, if you think he should win, clap. Oh, come on. No, I mean, come on. Really? Okay. If you think she should win, clap. If you think he should win, clap. For love. If you think she should win, clap. <laughs> I think he should win clap. Okay, all right, thank you, thank you. Okay, you got $500, man. Good job. For love, I hope you find love. A few moments later. Sire? No, sire. It is a very complicated name. That's why people call me Nas. Nas means people in Arabic. I was born in Israel as a Palestinian. It's a very complicated area over there, so I escaped. I went to the United States, I went to college in the United States, I studied and I got uh, a degree in economics. Then I graduated and I went to work in New York uh, as a software engineer at PayPal. And I was having the time of my life uh, making money and, and having fun and living in New York. But then one day, I did a simple calculation. I asked myself, when are you going to die? It's a simple question. Uh, turns out, you're on average, you're going to die when you're 76 in the United States. I think it's like 83 or something in Singapore, which is one of the highest in the world. So I was 24 back then. 24 out of 76 is 32%. So I was 32% done with life. I was one third dead. And that kind of scared the hell out of me, right? I was scared. And that's why I decided to spend the remaining 68% of my life traveling and doing things that I enjoy. So the next day I quit. I quit and I made, I had one idea. Every day I'm gonna make one video that's one minute long and I'm gonna put it on Facebook. That's it. No more, no less. I don't know how I'm gonna make money. I don't know where I'm gonna travel. I don't know the point of this. And that's how Nas Daily started. And I'm gonna show you the first video Video real quick it's just a minute of the first video I've ever made to begin this journey around the world the world is a book and those who do not travel we don't read one page jokes <laughs> let's do this that's day one see you in Egypt tomorrow and that's it it was a very simple video <laughs> And I put it and it got like, I don't know, like 300 views or something from my friends and their friends. And that's it. But I committed. I wanted to make this video every single day for a thousand days. Why? Because a thousand is a nice number. So in a thousand days, we made a thousand videos. 
The videos, we made them not in New York and not in Los Angeles. We made them in 55 countries because there's a lot of interesting stories in 55 countries, not just in Japan, not just in America, not just in Singapore. The videos, to my surprise, were viewed 4 billion times and 14 million people joined this journey. It was the most surprising thing of my life because I only made videos for my 30 friends. And for some reason, people liked the videos. They wanted to travel as well. People, we met people in Singapore, we met people in Canada, people in Malta, people in Armenia, in Australia, and in Peru. So, we've seen a lot, and I'm here to share with you the top five things that I've seen that I would love to talk about. Uh, this is a little bit more on the travel side, because we were here at Kluke. And I want to begin by telling you the best country, I think, to travel when it comes to nature. Uh, nature. See, everybody has nature, right? Singapore, Malaysia, Sri Lanka, United States, everybody has nature. Everybody has water, most people have water. Uh, but I feel like only one place in the world has like, kind of like made me go crazy, and that is the Maldives. I don't think there's any place that rivals this beauty. It is like you're in the middle of the ocean, you are in top of a coral reef, there is nothing around you. You have 4G reception, which is great. So you feel like you're in New York. And uh, the nature is like almost untouched. Granted, these resorts are expensive because the nature there is so beautiful. But I'm pretty sure there are tickets that you can get um, for like one day tours or whatever to get the same nature for 5% of the price. So when it comes to nature, I've never seen anything more beautiful than the Maldives. When it comes to people, obviously all people are good, all people are equal, uh, but some people are less shy than others. I wanted to quit my job because I wanted to dance with people like this. I wanted to, to experience different cultures and, and the place I'll never forget is Peru. When it comes to prices, I don't, and now everybody's listening. <laughs> Um, I think uh, you know there's a lot of um, there's a lot of good deals around, obviously. But uh, one place that I'll never forget is Thailand, uh, because one day you know, for for something as simple as a hotel, this is like a it's supposed to be a luxury hotel with a nice pool and, and good rooms. I was able to find it for 35 bucks. When I found that deal, I was like, well, what else is there that is affordable? And it turns out, this is by far the cheapest meal I have ever had in my life. It's 35 cents, it has meat, it has noodles, it has vegetables, it has broth, it has everything, and it costs 35 cents. And this is why I wanted to leave New York in the first place. Because the little money I had didn't go very far in New York. But here, I could buy a hundred of these meals and feel like, you know, I feel like I'm a generous guy giving you, you know, take, eat, 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 eat. And all of this costs like one meal in, in New York City. It also helps me, and it helps the business, it helps the locals, it helps everybody. This is why I escaped the big cities. The next place, and I think this is a little bit of, oh, it's not a formatting error, very cool. The next place I think you should visit is not very popular, and not many people know about it. Uh, it is a random paper shop in Sri Lanka. Uh, the paper looks like this, it's a paper shop. Not that interesting. But if you touch this paper a little bit, you feel like it's a little bit weird. It has no smell, but it's a little bit weird. Uh, and the reason for that is because it's made of poop. So, so in Sri Lanka, there is this factory that makes paper from elephant poop. Not human, elephant. And the reason for that is because elephants poop 16 times a day. And their poop is full of fiber. So they take all this stuff and they dry it, they dye it, they compress it, they do all this stuff to it to create paper that they sell in Sri Lanka. And if you ever go there, I really think you should check it out. As I said, it has no smell. I mean, it's, it's you know, elephants are vegetarian. Uh, so I highly recommend this place. And I'll never forget that someone was able to build a multi-million dollar business from the poop of elephants. What have, what have we built? <laughs> 
Uh, the next place, and the last place that I will remember forever, is in terms of culture, Papua New Guinea. Now, a lot of every country has culture. Every culture is unique. Every culture is beautiful. But some cultures are more untouched than others. They've had their own sort of way to develop without any interference, without the American Levi's, you know, without uh, without the food from McDonald's. And that is Papua New Guinea. It is considered to be as one of the most undiscovered countries in the world right now. They have 800 tribes, and every tribe has one language. So they have almost 800 languages in that country. How many languages do you have in Singapore, right? Three. In Israel, like five or something. It is insanely diverse. And when you go there, you know, this, I took this shot actually um, when I was crying. So this shot I was crying of, of happiness because that was the whole point of quitting a job and taking a risk and going to travel is to live those experiences. And this one, you cannot assign a price on it. I don't know if there's a ticket for this. I don't know if there's an organized tour for this. I just do know that the experience of dressing up like a local and, and dancing with them and having like a celebration with them is unbelievable. Now, all of this, the, the, all of this talk that I just times or 15 times more fun. I hope this inspires you to travel with someone and I want to thank you so much guys for listening to this short talk and I want to open it to, to questions if there's any questions. Thank you guys. All right, does anyone have any questions? Anyone from this side? I saw someone raise their hand.